on the last video. I respect her feelings, but I can't allow people's lives to be put at risk. If all else fails, destroying her is also an option. Destroying her? And so we continue. Hey there guys, LOI Games, I'm back with some more Persona 4 Arena. Where we last left off, we defeated Mitsuru, and now we are continuing onward. I wish you good luck. Thank you, Margaret. Now let's see what happens after the battle. Well done. You have proven your resolve. Thank you. Upon saying so, Mitsuru-san smiles. It seems that the sternness she had before the fight wasn't genuine. Now go after her. I'm confident that you can salvage her heart. Even though she, even though she had spoken about destroying her like an object before the fight, she just said her heart. Could it be... Did you let me win on purpose? I object to the question. I don't indulge people in critical situations like this. Huh. Yeah, she's right. The stern words Mitsuru-san said before we fought may have been actu may have actually been an attempt uh, an attempt at kindness on her part. Me going forward instead of her means that she, if the worst comes to worst, I will have to execute the painful decision instead of Mitsuru-san. If you think of it like that, losing on purpose wouldn't be kind at all. I chide myself for having such soft thoughts. Having some, ha, saving someone, saving someone's life isn't something that you could do half-heartedly. It was the same with the last year's case too. Since I fought Mitsuru-san and won, I must, I must accomplish this no matter what. Okay, then I'm going now, and I'm coming back with Labrys no matter what. That's the spirit. I'm counting on you, Amagi. Yeah. I turn my back towards Mitsuru-san and run out of the classroom. I hurry and try to make my way to Labrys as quickly as possible. I hope that Labrys is alright. I proceed down the hallways, once again led by invisible walls. As I make my way, I notice that I'm being led back to the announcement room where I had rushed out not long ago. What's the meaning of this? The door that was destroyed earlier is back to normal, and I didn't see Yuku nor Risei-chan around either. I try to open it. I need to figure out what was going on. Right, so what's going to happen, what? Well, I feel like I'm going ins going to go insane. When I open the door, a scene beyond the window has completely changed. There are tons of grotesque things that are shaped like people. It seems entirely different from the announcement room from earlier. Lavras and her shadow are fighting within this sinister within this sinister red world and trying to destroy each other. Lavras, please wake up! There are no lights in there is no light in Lavras's eyes. She's expressionless, like she really is a machine. She looks entirely different from when she had called herself student council president. Is this Labrys' true form? No, that's not it. You don't have to fight like that! Don't act like you're a machine! Labrys, who notices my voice, t takes distance from her shadow and turns to me. Her expression is still robotic. Analyzing voice print. Identity confirmed. As Yukiko Amagi. Yukiko. Amagi. We made a promise to each other! You just have to be yourself! You two did. Yukiko. San? Lavra's eyes look different now. They're not eyes of a machine anymore. They're the eyes of, La of the Labras that I've come to know in this short time. But once she drops her mechanical nature, her mechanical nature, her presence, her mechanical movements lose their rhythm. 
The shadow who has been watching us distorts her lips into a smirk and seizes up upon this opening. Oh, really? After she lied to you and used you all this time? That's not... Uh, First, you deceived her by acting human. And now that things are going your way, you've decided to be a machine instead? Why don't you just give it up? Just tell everyone how you really feel. You want the everyday boys and girls to experience what you had to go through. That's why we're in school, having a fighting tournament. You want to see close friends fight for their lives against each other. Because if they do that, then they might understand. You want to make them understand. No! That wasn't my wish at all! Damn. The shadow glares at me with as much hate as she could muster. Lavis looks towards me as well and her face scrunches up into a ball of sadness. I want my pain, I want my pain to be understood. The shadow ma made us friends fight against each other in this TV world because Lavis wished for this to happen. Does that mean Lavis was forced to fight against those who are close to her too? Just because she's a weapon? I don't think I can ever truly say that I understand how she feels, but. It's all right. I don't know what happened to you in the past, but whatever it was, it doesn't define you. I understand that much at least. Understand? What could you possibly understand? Oh, you thought it's some cheap, self-righteous pity. That's not true. It's not cheap. I know. I've seen Labrys' kind expressions. How Labrys is no different from any ordinary girl. My worries still don't reach Labrys. The shadow, the shadow ridicules Labrys with the with, who is still trembling and cannot move. Oh yeah? Then let me take over from here. I'll destroy everyone who pretends to understand, just like you did before. Stop! Upon hearing Labrys's voice, the shadow's face contorts into glee. That's when I finally figured it out. No, that's not right. I didn't figure it out. I remembered. I should have realized it sooner. A shadow's true objective. That's... No! You're not me! <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm myself. I'm not you anymore. I cannot lie, that looks really cool. A shadow goes berserk and gains the power and gains power after it's denied by its owner. I knew that, and yet I didn't stop it from happening. I step between Labrys and the shadow, who has changed into an ominous form. I couldn't stop her. I couldn't stop her shadow from going berserk, but it's still not too late. Same thing happened to me too. I am only here right now because you, Kun, and the others saved me when I rejected my own weakness. And just like then, someone needs to step in and save someone else. This time, it's my turn to save Labrys. Uh, let's get the ball rolling, shall we? Let's go. Ow. 
Take this. Woo! Gotcha. Yeah! Epicness just happened. Alright. Let's continue onward. Lavis's shadow collapses and stops moving. Thank goodness. It seems that I managed to win. All that's left all that is left is that is for Lavis to accept his shadow, and it should put an end to everything. But the weight of the past Labrys is harboring isn't a normal thing. When anyone goes through tough times, the wish to be the wish that normal people would experience their pain arises in everyone's minds at one point or another. But the pain from her past comes from being forced to kill her friends. It's incomparable to the problems I needed to face last year. If I was forced to hurt Chia until she died, I think I'd go insane and snap, and a snap. I wonder if she'll be okay. Labrys. I called to her while my heart is pounding. Labrys answers in a teary voice. I have to support her. Even though that there's no way I can understand everything she's gone through, I want to support her because there are things I can't understand. Why? Why did you save me? You already know I'm a machine. I'm a machine that's supposed to protect people. But because what they did to me was so painful, I took it out on other people too. So why are you? It's okay. You must have suffered so much. I'm sorry. You went through so much pain to protect us. But it's all right now. I won't let those things happen to you anymore. Labrys looks up in response to my words. When I think when Labrys protected us from her shadow, how she closed off her heart and, revert, and reverted back to a mechanical self, that she never wanted to show anyone making my heart ache. Makes my heart ache. I never wanted her to have to go through that again. Labrys has already lived through so many painful experiences. Because of that, I could never truly say that I understand her feelings. But, I'm sure that I can at least protect her so that she won't have to go through this pain anymore. It doesn't matter if you're human or not. I'm your friend. We made a promise, remember? You want to be friends? Of course. I thought we were already friends. Mm-hmm. Be friends? We're friends already. That's why if you're gonna go through tough times, I'll always be there to help you through th your through and protect you. Help you through, help you through and protect you. Yeah. Labra seems genuinely surprised. She probably doesn't realize it, but she doesn't look anything like a machine when she makes faces like that. I can tell that you truly have a heart. I faced my own shadow too. I wanted to blame everything on someone else because I felt so powerless. I was waiting for someone to do my work for me. I wanted to escape from my life, so I dreamed that a prince would take me away. But my friends helped me realize that was just me trying to run from my problems. I recount my own experiences for Lavras. It is the same as what Lavras went through a moment ago. She had feelings, experiences that she didn't ever want other people to know about because they were all true it makes it even harder to accept them, so she rejected them. Labrys has a heart just like I do. The reason I could accept my weakness and fight this to the very end is because I had my friends helping me. I had friends who worried about me, who stood beside me. I wasn't alone. I smile at Labrys, just as you couldn't did for me back then. And that gave me unimaginable strength. You're not alone anymore either. I'm sure you'll be able to find a place where you belong, too. Admitting your own weaknesses is scary. No one wants to see their weakness. But I know that it is, I know that it is possible if you don't have to face it alone. 
When Lavis hears my words, a light returns to her eyes. I can sense a strong will from her. That light must be from her heart. I'm so glad that my words got through to her. Lavis nods reassuringly and then begins walking towards her shadow. She takes the step towards her own weakness. The glitter effect is always, always lovely. Risei Chan contacted us as soon after. She must have detected the shadow's presence disappear, and we all, and we, and we were able to join up with each other. The invisible walls and the tournament rules both seem to have stopped once Labrys accepted her own shadow. As Risei Chan used her persona to contact everyone and tell them that everything has been solved. Some of us were surprised to discover that Kanji was here, as well as Naoto-kun, who wasn't even supposed to be in Inaba today. Risei-chan tells everyone to meet up on the rooftop. From what she tells us, the studio-like space connected to, connected to Junus seems to have been restored there. The four, of, uh, the four of us immediately began to head towards the entrance, but Labrys stops. When I, ask her wh when I ask what's wrong, she responds anxiously. Of course. Seems like I'd just be a nuisance. Not at all. Hmm? What do you mean, a nuisance? The only one that really would be would be Teddy. Well, you know, I I'm a machine. There'd be all sorts of problems. There would? <laughs> what does she mean by problems? Compared to Teddy, I can't think of any po possible problems Labrys would cause. Exactly, see? Are you saying it wouldn't bother you and your friends? Wow, you sure are cool about all of this. We are a band of misfits, after all. Jeez, Labrys, you sound more human than a lot of people out there. Truly. If I were you, I'd brag about it. You don't think it's cool being a robot and a Persona user? <laughs> it's unique, that's for sure. In any case, there's no way you'd be a nuisance. You could replace Teddy. Yukun and Risei both laugh out loud. I can't help but giggle along with them. Considering our circumstances, there's nothing at all there's nothing all that weird about Labrys. She's now a good friend of ours, no different from anyone else here. Hey there they are! Welcome back! Hello! Yukiko! You really outdid yourself this time! Why you look angry? When we reached the entrance, Yosuke Kun and Chie called to me at once. They've been worried about me ever since I fought against them. Teddy notices that Lavarus is with me and immediately dashes over to her with glee. No. Are you okay, Miss President? I was so worried about you. Teddy, back off. Go away. Shoot. Fly. Go. Bye. Huh? Those hands and legs. Are they accessories? They're so meta-luring. I can scarcely believe my eyes. The Kiwijo group's humanoid weapons actually exist. Oh yeah, Shadow technically... I mean, Shadow. Teddy is technically a Shadow, so Labrys exterminate. Naoto-kun seems to know a bit about her already. But yeah, considering that everyone is here, 
I think now is a good opportunity to introduce her. I tell everyone everything that has happened with Labras, with some help from Yukun's supplements, supplemental comments. After I finish talking, silence washes over the rooftop. Labras has fallen silent too. I look and looks nervous. Kanji Kun was the first to speak. Uh, I don't really get what's going on, but everything worked out, yeah? Yep. Oh, I'm glad everyone's alright. What's with the jumping to conclusions? You're one of the things that got us into this mess, you know? Well, that, that was a... Anyone could have done that. Actually, are you feeling okay? You're not tired or... Oh, what am I saying? Of course you're tired. She's talking to Yukiko. Huh? No, I'm fine. Um... Isn't there something wrong with this picture? Shouldn't you guys be pissed at me at all? No. <laughs> what would we be mad about? Yeah, what would we be mad about? Nah, don't worry about it. We're cool. Pretty much all of us have caused trouble for each other because of our shadows. Yeah. Yeah, especially kanji -kun. <laughs> We don't talk about that. Me? That's not fair. I never saw your guys' shadows, you know. Naoto's was pretty crazy, at least. Don't drag me into this. I mean, after the epithet given to Kanji-kun, I imagine that his shadow must have been far, far worse than mine. It was. H hell no! It was. Lavis blinks in surprise after seeing the group's usual friendly pace. See? See? I told you that there wouldn't be any problems. When I say that to her, Lavis quietly responds back, Man, you were right. And then... Well done, Amagi. I had every confidence that you could do this. Thank you. I hear a voice behind me. When I turn around, I see Mitsuru-san and two other people. Who are they? Were they in here looking for Labras too? Like Mitsuru-san, they both have weird outfits. And that person... It's nice to meet you all. My name is Igis. Thank you very much for saving my sister. The girl with the body similar to Labras seems to have noticed me looking at her and addresses me. Does she mean Labras? Then that means... Well, um, excuse me, but you're... I mean, are you also... Yes, I too am a robot. She's kind of a later version of what Labras was built for. Oh, I'm Akihiko Sonata. Sorry for all the trouble. No, at all. So, Aiga-san is the robot and Aki... is the robot and Akihiko-san is the one wearing the red cape. Okay, I've memorized them now. Actually, I guess I would actually be harder to forget them. In contrast to those two, Labras takes a... In contrast to those two, Labras takes a step back. Her expression is tense. Is she nervous? Of course she is. They came here looking for her, after all. Oh yeah, I didn't introduce everyone to Mitsuru-san and her friends. While I'm still flustered, Yukun and Risei officially introduce themselves to everyone else. And afterwards, Masuo-san explains the circumstances of how they ended up here to us. More like to Labras, though. How, it, how this case began by Labras being dropped into a TV and how they all pursued her into this world. As Mitsuru-san explains their intentions, Labras seems to get even more nervous. She must be worried. But it's all right. And Suisan realizes Labrys' emotional emotional state. She turns her gaze towards Labrys and kindly smiles at her. Don't worry. I'm not planning to seal you away again. Yeah, that's a good thing. But, but I ran wild and caused so much trouble. I mean, not just today, but back then, too. You've awakened to your persona and gained control over it. You're hardly a rogue test unit anymore. Besides... You have a heart. We would never treat anyone with a heart so poorly. Mitsuru-san really is, a kind, is as kind as I thought. Her emotions seem to have reached Labras as well, and she is about to smile to answer Mitsuru-san. Boo! Her expression goes blank and she suddenly stops moving. Huh? What's going on? Huh? Labras's recognition signal has been interrupted. Someone is hacking into her. Recognition signal? Hacking? What does she mean? Just as I'm about to reach towards Labrys. It's not over yet. A completely different person's voice comes out of Labrys' mouth. Upon hearing that, Mitsuru-san notices something that I don't, and mutters in surprise. Is this the same communication system we use? 
What are you standing around for? Everyone, get away from Labrys! Labrys' hands jerkingly reached towards the axe on her back. After a moment's pause, she swings at us all without any hesitation. Labrys! What's going on? I cannot gain access. She's being controlled. It isn't coming from inside this facility. The signal originates elsewhere. You mean outside the TV? Yes. This is just a little extra resistance. Now, entertain me. Labrys dashes towards us with glared eyes. Just when everyone is shell-shocked by a sudden turn of events, I stand before Labrys. What are you doing? It's too dangerous! I'll stop her. Isn't this part of protecting me? I need to stop this. I'm mocking you. I don't know what's going on, but there's no way Labrys would try to hurt anyone. Everyone. If someone is controlling Labrys, I have to put a stop to it. I draw my fan and face Labrys. I also made a promise to with her earlier. I promised that I'd never let her suffer alone again. Please, wake up! Place a bookmark here. And I think I'll end it here, guys. Anyway, like and favorite if you enjoy. Subscribe to the Archives and we'll see you next time.